Hello again folks. In last night's video I built this super simple Commodore Amiga joystick tester. Really simple design, just 5 LEDs, a 9 volt battery, 9 pin socket, plug the joystick in and when the micro switches close uh, the appropriate LED illuminates. Very, very simple. However, a chap called Peter Owen commented on the video this morning and highlighted quite a big oversight on my part and that was the fact that uh, joysticks of this era you always use 5 volts. Okay. And why is that important? Well, a lot of these joysticks, including this one, do have an auto fire feature. Um, and that circuitry in there might not be tolerant of the, that 9 volt supply. So he suggested I use a 7805 uh, voltage regulator to get this down to 5 volts and, you know, reduce the risk of damaging, uh, you know, the electronics inside the joystick. So tonight's video is just going to be this simple modification. Um, I assure you it will be fairly quick. I've done all the prep work, so it's just going to be a case of assembling it. I should point out though, this joystick actually does function quite well. Um, you can see the auto fire function is working uh, on that 9 volt supply. Um, but other things like this one, which I picked up only a couple of weeks ago, is really manky. You can see the uh, fire retardant chemicals coming out. This is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a carbon contact type uh, buttons uh, and you can adjust the speed. So I would think something like this would not be tolerant of that higher voltage. So let's crack on ahead and get this modified. So like Peter suggested, I'm just going to be using uh, a 7805. Um, I've got a switch and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So looking inside, that's what we did last night. And here's the circuit diagram of what I did last night. Really simple, uh, anodes common together and the uh, so, so the positive anode side common together and the negative side being switched through the, the joystick connector. So all we're going to do tonight is pop in the 7805 through a, a double pole single throw switch because that's going to uh, completely isolate the voltage regulator from that 9 volt supply. And uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just uh, bodge it in here and it should work quite well. So yeah, the reason uh, using that, that switch, that's going to fully isolate the uh, voltage regulator the uh, quiescent current on these is just over five uh, five milliamps. So, if we think of a nine volt battery being around a sort of five hundred milliamp hour capacity, <clears throat> excuse me, basic mass five hundred divided by five gives us a hundred. So it gives us a hundred hours of it uh, sitting in an idle state. Um, and again, rough mass again. If we divide that hundred by 24 uh, we're going to get a shade over four days worth out of that battery that's without even using it so by completely isolating it it's going to it's going to last a lot longer so here's our switch um we've got a uh, this is going to be the output so we've got our uh, live and a positive i should say and negative and the common for, to go onto the connector and all we're going to do is pop on the 9 volt supply onto that and, and then tack it onto the voltage regulator. So let's uh, crack on and do that now. So we'll take off that. Take off that. There we go. We'll pop these straight on here. Try and do this one handed. Like so, so that should do it. Uh, I'll just mount the switch at this point as well. And we'll just tweak that up with the uh, needle nose pliers. Like so. Right, so here's our um, output here from the switch. That's in the off position there, good stuff. And I'll just uh, mount this regulator. In fact, no, we'll, we'll solder it on first. 
So a uh, load, or sorry, a power supply goes into uh, pin one and two. So pin one is the the live positive side, and uh, pin two is the the negative. So I will just uh, tin those up. Like so, and we'll pop the uh, appropriate leads on. I'll just bend these leads out slightly as well, make it a bit uh, easier. There we go. There we go, and we'll pop the negative side onto pin eight on the connector here. Yeah, that looks okay, and that's pretty much it. The only thing left to do is to uh, pop. The output of the regulator onto the the common anodes of the LEDs, and then we'll uh, should be in business. So I'm just going to pop this in here. Got a screw ready, and there's going to be no requirement to heat sink this. Uh, dig out the biggest screwdriver. This is probably going to be too big. No, that's okay. There we go. Get that adjusted so it's not going to short with anything. on the output and that should be us in business so there we go fairly straightforward we'll pop that back together I'm not going to screw it on uh, screw the enclosure together but do that after it afterwards just to keep the time of the video down so we'll plug this in as you can see it doesn't work we'll turn it on and check the auto fire function and there we go working perfectly no dramas at all so there we go uh, nice uh, easy modification it's going to ensure that your um it's going to ensure that your joysticks are protected um of course we don't want to you when we're restoring joysticks now we want the minimum of effort uh, effort to uh, get them up to scratch and you know by doing this we're, we're going to prevent any p potential damage so there we go guys hopefully uh, you enjoyed that video uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. As always, if you haven't already done so and you'd like to do so, click on my fat head here and subscribe. And uh, until next time, take care of yourselves and as always, all the best.